the Trilosophy Podcast. In fact, sports, music, film. February 22nd, 2018. All right. I know it's been a little while since we've done our last episode. And today we're going to be talking some film. Even some books. Tonight I have a special guest for you. He's a New York Times best-selling author. Released his first book in 1997. That was an instant classic. And he's still going strong 21 years later. It is my pleasure to talk to this man alone and interview him. Steve Alton, everyone. What's up, Steve? How are you? It's an absolute honor to have you on tonight, man. I appreciate you having me on. All right. Um... I've always seen, I've always seen Meg growing up, because uh, I'm 29 years old. So in '97, I mean, yeah, I was still a youngin. But I, I've always seen Meg, and and I, I don't, I don't know why. I never picked up. Finally, I don't know why it took me so long to read it. But as soon as I read it, I just kept going. I bought all the books, and I've read that whole series, with the exception of the sixth book, three times already. I like that them apples. Well, for those of your listeners who don't know what Meg is, maybe we can take a second and explain what it is. Absolutely. So, uh, let's, um... Well, Meg was my first book. It's part of a series, as you mentioned. Meg stands for, is short for Carcaranon Megalodon, which was the 70-foot, 70,000-pound prehistoric great white shark, the cousin of the modern-day great white shark, I should say. And uh, in the first book, Meg is discovered in the Mariana Trench, seven miles down in the Western Pacific, a 1,550-mile-long, 40-mile-wide, unexplored gorge. And the hero of the story, Jonas Taylor, had run into these sharks on a secret naval, Navy dive seven years earlier before the story starts. And he's trying to prove that these creatures are still alive. And when the opportunity goes, comes to him to go back to the Mariana Trench to what to do what he hopes to do, which is recover a, a white tooth, which would prove the species is still alive. Everything goes wrong, and one of these creatures manages to escape and create a lot of havoc until the series opens up. It's definitely a novel of deep terror. So uh, what what made you write this book? Well, I, you know, when I grew up, I'm a lot older than you. I'm 58, and when I grew up, I was a teenager when Jaws came out, and I read the book and sort of became enamored with everything to do with the great white shark. And there was always um, a little blurb and a paragraph tucked away someplace about Carcharon on Megalodon, the prehistoric cousin of the great white. But nothing commercial had ever been written about it. And when I was uh, 37 years old, I was struggling to support a family of five, and always wanted to write and in the um, summer of 1995 an article came out in Time Magazine it was actually a front page article Mariana Trench and hydrothermal vents in this unexplored realm at the bottom of the ocean and and as I read the story and read the science behind it you know I thought you know what was that prehistoric great white shark called and I, I went to the library there was no internet back then in 95 and um found a picture of these six nerdy looking scientists sitting in a megalodon jaw. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna write this book. I'm gonna put the put this species down there, I'm gonna justify it still being alive, which I could certainly do because there's a lot of science behind it and write this story and because I had a job at what I call a J O B at just over broke where I was barely getting by. I hear you. Um I had to work on I <laughs> yeah. Not too much has changed that way, but um you know, I I'd, uh, had to write the book from 10 o'clock at night till 3 in the morning and on weekends. And I sat at an old word processor at the dining room table and were, and basically wrote the book in about five months, the first draft. And then um was able to hook up with a great literary agent who helped me edit the book. And <clears throat> we took it out and 
that was uh, the start of things to come. That was 22 years ago. And now Megan's finally coming out to be a movie on August 10th, Gosh, 2018, man. with starring Jason Statham and Ruby Rose, Rain Wilson, Bing Bing Lee, and a huge international cast of stars. Yeah, that's set, set up to be a, a huge blockbuster in the summer. Uh, at, at, you know, at, as a little kid, believe it or not, I, I actually wanted to be an ichthyologist. That's what I wanted to do when I, when I grew up. I grabbed every shark book with facts and watched every shark TV show, you know, like on Shark Week, Discovery, anything. I even uh, picked up the book uh, with uh, the shark lady from uh, Eugenie Clark. Which you know was a uh, kind of a famed ichthyologist, I believe, in the seventies. I don't know. Sharks were always fascinating to me, and and this really brought me back to uh, you know as a child. And I don't know. I I, I could not I, I I could not become an ichthyologist just just because just uh, diving with sharks or being in a cage. I don't know. That freaked me out. I I, I just I was like, no, I can't do that. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure that's a qualification of what you have to do to become an ichthyologist, but, you know, I wouldn't call it in a shark cage either. But um, you had mentioned the new, the sixth book in the Make series, Make Generations, which I'm currently finishing up. I should be finished in the next 30 days. And and that got uh, a whole different shark species uh, involved as well as Megalodon. And, wow. Uh, maybe the best, this may be the best book out of the Make series. And, it certainly got the most frightening cover, and but the thing is, is so your listeners know that it's not being sold in stores. I'm doing something completely different to support my mag, my mag heads. Uh, I'm only selling it to them off my website. Uh, the book will never be hard back. Uh, it's just a decision I made. Something special I wanted to do for my fans for supporting for 20 years. And um, if you're one of the first 2,500 who purchases the book, and we're getting close to that right now, we hit a target, which is 10,000 books sold, you will get a Meg Generations poster suitable for hanging up on your, in frames and on your wall. And it's the nasty looking cover. Oh, yeah, that's, that's definitely the best cover. I mean, you know, the, the, the shark is, you know, it's, that it, gi- it gives it that albino white how it's you know described and and so so everyone you can get it at us www.stevealton.com and you have to pre-order before march 16th all right so um after you um after you wrote your first book though you had a, a movie deal in place correct yeah, what happened was um, we've had a few um, in 96 um, before the book went on the market to publishers. My uh, agent, uh, Ken Atchity, had uh, closed a, a first book deal with Hollywood Pictures for Meg. And um, what happened was is that um, they put it into development, but um, uh, the uh, the head of Hollywood Pictures was fired. A year later, and when the head of a movie studio leaves, all the projects that haven't been greenlit yet all go with them into the toilet. So because the, new, the incoming president doesn't want to have any successes attributed to the old one, so it's all an ego business. So the right Meg had reverted back to me, and of course by this time Meg had come out, and it was in stores, it was a New York Times bestseller, and Got a lot of people excited about seeing the movie, but we uh, the movie deal was canceled. And then about um, seven years later, New Line Cinema, well, what had happened was um, a friend of mine, Nick Nunziata, who I'd met, um, he was the uh, creator of Chud.com, Cinematic Happenings Under Development. And uh, Nick uh, was enamored with the project, and he took it to a friend of his when he found out it was available, Guillermo del Toro, the director. Yeah. And Guillermo took it to his um, producer who had done Hellboy, Lloyd Levin. And um, so I gave them the option on the on the project, and they took it to New Line Cinema, and New Line Cinema wanted it. And um, so they started in development with it, New Line Cinema. 
but they wanted another screenwriter who would take a completely different take on the movie and on the book and um, sort of made it into Moby Dick with a shark. And that just didn't work very well. And uh, fortunately, New Line Cinema never greenlit the project and it was returned. It was reverted the rights back to me. And I took it out to a friend of mine who was a producer named Bell Avery. And Bell Avery was responsible for getting fin- independently financed about um, $1.4 billion worth of movies in America. Gosh. And Bell took it to her um, allies and friends and associates in China at Gravity Pictures and took about six or seven years for her to get the job done, but she got it done in a big way. And they put up uh, $150 million in financing for the movie independently, which is a huge amount of money for an independent movie. And uh, took it to Warner Brothers for distribution, and Warner Brothers loved it so much they said, hey, we don't want to just distribute this movie, We we want to own part of it. They bought in, and uh, about uh, six to eight months later, Jason Statham was attached as the lead actor, known as Taylor. And they added Ring Wilson and Ruby Rose and Bing Bing Lee. And um, the original director was Eli Roth, but um, uh, they decided to uh, give it to John Turtletop because he had a little bit more experience with the big ones, the big tentpole projections. Uh, and um, we moved on from there. And the movie was shot a year ago and been in post-production ever since. They're adding some tremendous special effects. And from what I understand, the testing audiences absolutely went nuts over it. That was before all the special effects were put in. So wow. that's a pretty good sign. No, that, that's great. I mean, especially for uh, for the megheads. You know that they're looking forward to the movie. You know the the loyal fans. Are 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 you are you happier that it took much longer and that this at that the CGI and special effects are much much better and bring the beast alive? Well, it's been a long wait, so I can't say I'm happy about the wait. I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it's been a roller coaster ride for my career, and and um, I bet. I bet. You know, I've got. I've got 17 other novels out there, and one of them, uh, The Lock, has already been an option for the movie, and, and uh, Sharkman, something special is going on with Sharkman. Okay. But, um, you know, the benefit of having to wait is that the CGI has improved tremendously, and it will certainly be a scary movie experience. Um, you know, but... Uh, you know, I'm just working on Generations right now and trying to make that the best book of the series. And, and at the same time, I'm also promoting a new ebook that I have out under my name. It was originally came out under a, a pen name, L.A. Knight, and that's called Dog Training the American Male. And that's a comedy, mm-hmm. uh, 4.90. Dog Training the American Male is about a, a female radio talk show host and relationship who all her relationships it and so are her ratings and until she discovers that the dog training techniques used on her boyfriend's dog or on her boyfriend wow so so uh will that be made into a film as well so it's, uh, so? it's a really funny book and definitely So tell tell us you you were you kept you were talking about um you were just asking me a question before we got caught off uh, you were you were saying will you and then I heard yeah it yeah it was the um that that the book you were talking about is that going to be made into a film as well uh we've got some producers circling it but I hope so um uh. Like I said, the ebook just came out last week. Uh, it's under Dog Training the American Male. Yeah. Under Steve, not Ellie. And um, definitely check it out. So you said that, that's, a, that's a comedy book now, right? That's, I mean, that's total. That's you steered total, totally uh, away from like the the horror science fiction. Uh, what what makes an author go from genre to genre? Does does uh, an author get 
maybe bored or just want to 